Okay, this lesson for the Cornet Project class will review a brief article that is by Grace Evangelical Society, a blog article by Dr. Bob Wilkin on May 10th. Uh, it's May 14th, so this has not been that many days ago. He said an article was sent to him. Uh, it was titled, Salvation is Not Unconditional by Dr. Robert Gagnon. And there's a link there. I'll include this article. We'll look now uh, in just a few minutes uh, at John 11, verse 26, because that's mentioned here. But he said, Gagnon's second paragraph starts out great. One has to believe the gospel, saying there is a condition. If by the gospel he means justification by faith alone, Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9, then he is correct. One must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved from eternal condemnation. However, Dr. Wilkins says, I chopped off the end of that sentence. Gagnon's full sentence is one has to believe the gospel, which is more than intellectual assent to the truth. Now, what I would like to focus on for just a few moments uh, is that what is intellectual assent? And then in this article, Dr. Wilkin references John eleven twenty six when Jesus asked, are you believing this? Now, we'll, let's just get the text up there and then look at what the Bible teaches us about persuasion and faith. And then let's define uh, intellectual assent. And I went to etymology online. I'll include that information to understand what that meant in that word and when it originated. So here, John 11, 26, 26, Jesus said, and or indeed, everyone, now he's speaking to Martha, of course, indeed, everyone, zone, present active participle from zoe, I mean from zoo, the one who everyone well, the one who is believing. Now, this is already believing. This is living. I'm sorry. The one who's already living. Now we have the Granville Sharp, Kai. That is Pistuon. That is believing. Of course, that's already also, you can notice that at the Ezra Project, we noticed that, that already believing, continuous action, but already occurring, is already believing into me, ace, into a me, into me. Then he went very emphatically, ume, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And then we have this aorist, um, simple form of action, apothane. Absolutely might not die. So might. So might absolutely not die. And then he went on and very emphatically and stated into ton Iona. Into the age, into the age. So let's just put an exclamation point. Then he asked the question, and it's indicative, so it could be a statement as well as a question. Pistu from Pistu O, from Pistu O, but it's Pistu A, second person singular. Remember, O, A, S, A, Omen, Et, Usi. So are you, are you, Already, I'll make sure I put that in there. Believing this, Tuto, this. Now, what really changes and is a striking thing that really makes it unassailable is he's speaking presently now. Are you already doing this? This is a present active participle, both of these. That's a forever aspect, not a forever. Uh, action. He's asking here, have you, are you one who's been persuaded that this is true? Because we learned in the Bible, patho, patho is the verb persuade, and it leads to 
pistis, which is faith. So if you believe, it's because you've been persuaded to believe. Now I'll go ahead and write assent here, and then intellectual here, and we'll get to that in just a moment. And then we'll just kind of divide our board for our lesson so we can keep it good and clean. But he said, what is believing the gospel, Dr. Wilkin asked, if it is more than intellectual assent? So he now says, Dr. Gagnon continues, it is a holistic life reorientation that inevitably leads to Christ's spirit being the controlling influence in our lives. That's the view of Jesus, Paul, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, the writers of Hebrew, or the writer of Hebrews, the writer of Revelation, first, second, Peter, James. In short, he says the entire New Testament to argue otherwise is a false gospel. So he goes on to say that salvation is a process that is not finalized. Now, this call, recalls what we studied when Dr. John Piper, who was former, formerly a preacher of a uh, supporter of justification by faith alone, and he then began to teach works and took a text from Philippians and said, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. We noticed it was work according to your salvation. It was the salvation singular of you all, plural, collectively there as that uh, covenant to together community, that ecclesia in Philippi. And he said, in fear and trembling. But in the previous chapter, he had spoken that Paul had said his incarceration had caused other brethren to be confident and to be more bold, if you will, emboldened to preach. Well, then he spoke to the rest of them, imploring them and requesting in an imperative sense, literally, we'd say commanding, but he was very gracious in his plea to them to work according in relationship to the salvation singer of they of them all you all plural in fear and trembling so john piper said faith might get you justified but it won't get you to heaven so that's completely heretical he obviously if he was ever a believer in the gospel of justification by faith as historically he had taught that then he's been bewitched, like the churches in Galatia, the members there. And now this gentleman has said there is a condition of salvation. It's faith, but that's more than intellectual assent. So now uh, Dr. John W. Robbins, the late Dr. John Robbins, high reformer of the Trinity Foundation, took on a Dr. John MacArthur two decades ago saying that Dr. John MacArthur redefined faith, saving faith, saying that what makes faith saving is works not faith. And now we have uh, Gagnon redefining the condition. He may say it is believe the gospel, but believe is more than intellectual assent. And yet we don't have him defining it. He went on to say that salvation is a process that's not finalized, of course. And he says, those who slack off, relax their efforts, give up, grow weary of doing what is right, do not reap a harvest of eternal life. So he's now making eternal life. The condition of eternal life is both the free gift of eternal life by faith and conflating it with the high cost of discipleship and probably probably would be an advocate of endure to the end, of course, taking that completely out of context. But again, this is happening. And he says, uh, he does say, uh, Dr. Wilkin notices how interesting it is that Gagnon does say that salvation by grace is completely undeserved and unmerited. But you better merit it to assure and gain your final salvation. So it's another contradiction. So there's two points he, Dr. Wilkin, agreed on. He said salvation from eternal condemnation is conditioned upon faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the second agreement is salvation from eternal condemnation is completely undeserved and unmerited. He went on and said, however, he disagrees because um, he spoke of faith in Christ is intellectual assent to the truth. When the Lord Jesus Christ asked Martha, do you believe this? John eleven twenty six 26b, the second part. He was asking whether she was convinced that what he had just promised was true and what he had promised in John eleven twenty five through 26a. You can go back and look at that. So he was not asking whether she had experienced a holistic life reorientation that had led to the Holy Spirit controlling her life. She wouldn't have known anyway. Disagreement two: the faith alone message is not a false gospel, as Gagnon said it is, as all Orthodox Christians have taught uh, 
uh, well, it's the only gospel there is, justification by faith alone in Christ Jesus only. So it says the um, faith alone message, this man is saying it is a false gospel. It's the faith plus message is the false gospel, which is what Dr. John Piper's legacy now is, faith plus works. It's now what John Robbins, a high reformer, the late John Robbins, took uh, Dr. John MacArthur to task over. You can read it. I'd never read the book, The Gospel According to Jesus. I was pastoring, studying a minister of the New Covenant, pastoring a New Covenant community, uh, feeding the flock, shepherding the people, <laughs> all that goes with pastoring. So I don't know why I would be buying books since I already had plenty of uh, knowledge of the truth. So. Uh, it goes on and says that um, disagreement number three, he talks about a present tense salvation of 1 Corinthians 15, 2 that requires holding fast to Paul's gospel. That's not salvation from eternal condemnation. Compare the past tense salvation, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Also compare the past tense in Galatians 2, 16. Even we ourselves believe, past point in time, that moment Paul said that they have noticed and continue to notice that no kind of man is being justified out from any kind of works of any kind of law except through Jesus Christ's faithfulness. Paul said, even we ourselves believe, simple form of action, past tense, not an ongoing action into Jesus Christ in order that we might be declared right out from Christ's faithfulness. So it's not our faithfulness. It's Jesus Christ's faithfulness. That's a subjective, possessive genitive. It's only Christ's faithfulness. So um, disagreement number four, Galatians 6, 7, 9 does not teach that regeneration will occur if a believer perseveres in good works until death. Um, even R.C. Sproul has the best argument against the phrase perseverance of the saints. He he thinks it's a terrible thing to say. Uh, John 3.16 is crystal clear. So are over a hundred other faith alone verses in the Bible. Uh, so how do people, I'm, I'll include this entire article. So how do people get this wrong? Uh, tradition, uh, priming, we've talked about that numerous times. Uh, Dr. Jeff Barger, uh, good news here in his book, 2015, the book called The Kingdom Parables Reason, Reality and Rest by Jeff C. Barger on page 49. He said, one must be clear in his understanding that the faith involved in receiving eternal salvation does not involve a commitment of the needy sinner to make Jesus Christ his king. And you know, high Calvinists uh, will ridicule people for say even saying make Jesus Lord or make him Lord of your life or king. And they'll say, you can't do that. He's already the Lord. And they trivialize what the person might mean. And they marginalize someone who's finally come to the point in his life. He wants, desires Christ to be reign over him. Uh, but nevertheless, let's go on. He said, though some preachers, Dr. Barger says, intimate such a, com a commitment to be a component of saving faith. It just is not so. Now, Bible schools are coming up. They'll be going all over the world. And we'll have young people, for example, like Paul told Timothy, from a child, you've known the scriptures. And then we'll teach them for days uh, and have the opportunity to be with them, interact with them, teach them, even do illustrations, interactive activities. Um, several of them that are there this summer uh, will believe Jesus Christ for everlasting life, but they won't be returned to the assembly necessarily in the fall, let's say, after summer's over, school returns. Um, a lot less will return or be brought back by their parents who will then unite in a covenant community and then nurture and foster them in the admonition of the Lord and uh, raise them upwardly in the developmental steps of discipleship and see them become conformed to the image of Christ there and that full stature of Christ in the ecclesia. Um, more will believe this summer than will come to be baptized. More will be baptized than those who steadfastly continue in apostles' doctrine. Uh, more will steadfastly continue um, than those that enter into a fellowship that's into the gospel. And then those who enter into fellowship, uh, even fewer will self-examine, self-correct before they present themselves to the Lord's table and eat the Lord's Supper. And then uh, there's particular prayers, the ecclesia. There's few that even would know what those were. And then even less will go out and make disciples. So uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that the first thing we preached, which was the good news, and all throughout our engagements in the ecclesia, it's all centered on Christ, baptism. Uh, we were raised to walk in an unprecedented newness of life. That occurs in an ecclesia with multiple 
people there, fathers of children, mothers to children, husbands to wives, wives to husbands, brothers to brothers in a covenant, and sisters to sisters in a covenant relationship, all there modeling the behavior and teaching as well and engaging these children, showing both showing and telling them how to live in this covenant community, this body of Christ under his headship. So uh, that's a long, lengthy process of disciple making. Uh, but even the Calvinists will tell you that people can join a church and whatever, and it still doesn't, quote, make them saved. As, but then they'll say, if you're really saved, you'll do all that. So it's a, it's a speaking out of both sides of your mouth. But Dr. Barger makes it clear He says, salvation is a matter of belief plus nothing, and it does not involve any intention to be committed to live for God afterwards. The kingdom relates to the lives of believers. Kingdom teaching is applicable only to them. Now, this is why the parables can be misused and certainly not with malice of forethought always, but can be misused when we ignore that coming under the reign of Christ and working, as we would say, within kingdom work, uh, that means it's under the purview of Christ's reign, his people, his work being done his way. And that's very different than what goes on in what we call Christendom, I guess, what, where it mostly is commercializing Christ and merchandising men. Um, but now let's look at ascent here. And see what we've got because I've got several or several quotes here. I'd like to cover them. First, I won't, don't want to be remiss and leave out what John Calvin said. So let's let John Calvin speak a moment. The late John Calvin. John Calvin. He said um, in his commentary on John chapter three, verse thirty-three. John Calvin wrote, "To believe the gospel is nothing else." than to assent to the truths that God has revealed. So he says assent means to, or to believe means to, to believe the gospel means to assent to the truths, to the truths that God has revealed. So to assent to the truth. Now that's John Calvin. He's the leader of all types of uh, disciples today. And they're walking contradictions as we all are when we mix uh, jargon and form categories with the scriptures. So under intellectual, it refers to, now I'm going to etymology online. Well, let me go to assent here. I'm sorry. Let me get, stay with assent. And now we have intellectual. So John Calvin said, this is what it means to believe the gospel. So he said to assent. So he's used that term. And now assent in the 1300, remember John Calvin born 1509. So he had, he was born two centuries after this was established. So circa 1300, according to etymology online, assent means to agree to, agree to, and it means to approve, approve, and then it means to, and we'll stop here, admit, admit as true. Now that's very much like what we've learned in the Bible, that belief, belief as we've shown up here is to be persuaded persuaded and that's well established in grace evangelical society Uh, and we'll just say that the gospel is true now remember though on this time here this idea of already the one who's living already that is believing already into me is absolutely absolutely might not die because you remember in John 6 47 John six forty seven, Jesus said, Amen, 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 Lego, Heman, to you all. So he said, uh, Verily, verily, I am decreeing to you all decreeing to you all 
And he said, the one is to own. So the one who is already believing into me is already believing into me. Into me. And me. So the one who's already believing into me, he said, Eke is already having, there we go, Zoain, Zoain, Ionion, eternal life. So where's the, <laughs> where is the not yet? Uh, where's the not nowness? Uh, where is the after a long lengthy process? You will, you see, Jesus' words are so simply and so precisely expressed and ultimately authoritative. No authority above him, every authority in heaven upon the earth has been given to him. He decreed, saying, I'm decreeing to you all, the one who's believing into me already is already having everlasting life. He said, the person who is living, that is already living, that is believing into me, absolutely, might absolutely not die into the age. He really punctuated it. And then he asked her, are you already, are you already believing this? And then we've learned persuade results in faith. And now we have a scent. John Calvin used the word. We now see what the word is. We have intellectual uh, which is somewhere in the late 14th century. So John Calvin had knowledge of that word. 14th century uh, refers to something grasped by the understanding. By the understanding. Um, it's an adjective, of course. Uh, rather than by the senses, that is ex feelings, experiences. This is grasped by the understanding. And then it um, relating to the understanding. So this is about our mind, our mind. And then really interesting uh, for us as I close my time, I'm running out. Of, oh, yeah, I'm running out of time. Uh, we have this word that people often use, metanoia, metanoia. And this is the mind. This is mind. And this term here, A and B, there's not dispute, but etymologist, of course. And then this word, ama. They're trying, they're, they're debating over which one of these two uh, is this related to. This one was amid, and even as we've done before, in association with association and then the etymologists who dispute that then will say no it's more to do this word well this word's together with so you notice these in the great commission uh, jesus said i will be with you in association together with you all uh, until the end of the age and he was referring to the carrying out of the disciple making but it's interesting when we break this word down this greek word because this is not we don't have our Strong's number or whatever, but we can now go and find that when we talk about, when we insist that this is referring to the mind which is engaged when the gospel is preached, and that for a person to mind, it also here, um, the verb, noeo, refers to mind as a verb, and that also refers to the idea to heed something, to heed, which is to mind, as we who had fathers like mine, very authoritative, very uh, with discipline us by design, strengthen us through structure, uh, very careful to keep us on the uh, major, as you'd say, keep us on the train, on the tracks, going the right direction. He was very seldom focused on the minor things, but it's to heed something, to mind it, to mind in association with. But isn't that fascinating? Those who constantly uh, diminish, marginalize, and assault intellectual assent, probably like me, I've never studied intellectual assent. I never did a lesson on it where I went down and broke it down like this, and certainly have I never demonstrated uh, the mind, mental part, and its relationship 
relationship to that word uh, repent. So that's enough. That's a good lesson. It's just as uh, Dr. MacArthur redefined saving faith to say what makes it saving is works. And John Piper said, work out your salvation in spirit, uh, fear and trembling, saying that justification might get you justified, but it won't get you to heaven. So there's Dr. MacArthur, Dr. Piper, and now this man, Mr. Gagnon, now redefining the condition, saying it is belief, but that's more than intellectual assent, which what he said is basically unintelligible. And then he enlarged it to a scope that was not just discipleship, but uh, faithful until death, I suppose, would be um, his words. But anyway, it's disappointing, again, that this continues to be uh, the, ta- the, the doctrine that's used to supplant the gospel of Christ concerning the moment a person believes and the instant they believe they're already having everlasting life. I mean, you could word it out from the Corne text and people still will dismiss Christ. And that's what Paul said. There's a persuasion that's not from God, Galatians 5, 8. And Dr. Gagnon is obviously under the influence of that persuasion that's not from God. That is, if he ever believed uh, Christ Jesus for everlasting life and believe Jesus only and accepts that salvation is by grace through faith that moment you believe. But I'll include these articles and um, enjoy this lesson. I hope it's informative, but it's good for us to define our terms. It's point number four in the historic holistic hermeneutic course that uh, Dr. John Penn uh, developed in over years as a seminary professor. So have a blessed day.